Hey everybody, it's David, David R. Becker with Becker Art, and today we're here to do some racks. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, this is one of the most, <laughs> I've gotten this request more than any of the other requests I've ever gotten, is we need to learn how to paint racks, boulders. <laughs> I'm like, what? Um, yes, so um, tonight is the night. I probably should publicize it more because everybody wants to learn how to paint racks. I'm not sure why, but everybody wants to paint racks. So that's what we're doing tonight. And so this afternoon we painted some rocks. Um, here we are. That's what we did this afternoon. And so there's some rocks, all right? So we will do them a little bit differently in color-wise, but um, we'll see what we can do with rocks, all right? Boulders, rocks. And I'll give you a few little examples of how to paint different types of rocks. That was one of my, actually, um, Irving Shapiro was probably the best at it. And he was my instructor, my mentor. And so he was really good at that. And so <laughs> hopefully that'll help, out, help me out a lot to teaching you guys how to do rocks. All right. So let's go really quickly. Oh, the beer. The beer tonight is um, a Reinsdorf. And I'm um, from Germany, probably, or somewhere over overseas. Um, yeah, from Germany, probably from Germany. And so here's what we're having tonight. And so let's just pour it real quickly. <laughs> and see what this one will be like. And I, and I just read that somebody said beer on the rocks. Yep. <laughs> so beer, beer on the rocks tonight. So look at that big foam I put in there. So I was gonna have to wait a second before I taste it. <laughs> so let's put that aside and let's go right to, um, uh, I'll, I'll toast in a second. <laughs> Let me just see. All right, so website, all right, from my website, guys, um, davidrbecker.com or beckerart.net. So every, everything you can find out about what I'm doing, where I'm at, and, um, you know, everything. All right, so just go there anytime you need to find out anything. Supplies tonight are what I always use, my Holbein watercolors, my Holbein brushes. No masking fluid tonight, though, if you want to. Transfer paper, um, that's by... by um, Richardson and it's more of a graphite paper not gra yeah it's more of a graphite paper not a graphite paper it's actually a transfer paper graphite paper is actually graphite this is not graphite and of course Stonehenge aqua um, cold press is that what we're using value study okay so rocks 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 um, they're not as important as you think they are we have to remember the value study uh, more importantly than the shape of the rocks or anything like that and same thing with drawing is number one always drawing number one number two is the value study the value pattern the design of the whole image so when we have a bunch of rocks like about a million rocks on a beach or on a river you have to look and see how you can place them together in value and so you can see that right over here um, i did these rocks back here and I what I did is I put a poster artifact in this so you can't see any detail and you're just taking down the values from like almost black to white there's a little bit of gray in here but I just want to show you I could take one step farther and take away this gray which is back here and this a lot of gray inside here to give you the black and white pattern it's so important I can't I can't stress it enough how important the the value pattern of black and white not even no um, middle tone middle tone can go to either side like this middle tone i'm going to be putting into the light area and this middle tone down here is also kind of going to be put into the light so that the darks are these trees right here and the few big boulders up front here and a few of that run back here with this because all these boulders all these rocks back here are going to be in the dark and all these in the dark at the front but if you look at the top of these uh, boulders and rocks you're going to see all boulders are a shape like a cube, a, a triangle, or a cone, um, a sphere. That's um, all the things that are, and there's that you learn in like when you're in art school about how to light something. And it's a cube, and so the top is always going to be the lightest, usually the lightest, and because it's pointing directly towards the sun or the sky, which is where the light comes from. And it's going to be the top part of the rock will be light, and the side will be dark. And so we have a lot of negative painting and I'll explain that in a little bit. All right, so let's get going to our tabletop and get going here. So here's what I did this afternoon. And let's taste this beer first. Let's put a little bit more, top it up here a little bit. And um, give you guys a hello. <laughs> all right, that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Germans always make really good beers. <laughs> so that's a very good beer. So cheers everybody, cheers to a learning how to paint rocks and also paint with inside the water painting through the water 
and painting what's the, on the bottom of the um, creek or river. And so that's what we're doing. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. All right, that's about, that's a 10. That's a very good beer. <laughs> Those Germans know how to make their beers. So 10, no, no bitter aftertaste, I don't, I, which I don't like so much. <laughs> so that's a great beer. A 10, not 11. 11 is a super great beer, but that's a 10. All right, and again, that's called Reinsdorf. Where is it? There, there it is. So if you want to see, if somebody wants to see what it actually it is, there it is, Reinsdorf Kolsch. All right, and so let me see who's all here today. And so, hey, Barbara, hey, Pamela, hey, Morris, Sue, Monica, uh, Evelyn, Phil, Linda, Betsy, and Marianne. And um, looks like we got everywhere from Sheboygan to Washington. Uh, that's awesome. That is super awesome. And uh, for all you that didn't write anything down, welcome also. You don't have to write into the comments if you don't want. And um, please ask questions when you do have a question. We all like to hear questions. And um, here's what we did this afternoon. And my, I'm getting so tired of green. Let me tell you, I know I've been learning how to do green and green is fine and everything, but I'm just gonna, I think I, I had enough of green now. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make this afternoons, um, this evenings, I'm not gonna make as green as this. And I mean, this is not super green um, and I kept the foreground warm, but I just wanna, I wanna get away. Let's make it a fall scene for this evening. <laughs> just because I am getting really tired of greens. It's just not my favorite color. What can I say? <laughs> so let's put this side. And it was there's nothing too bad about this one. And so I don't think I'm gonna. What I didn't do was leave enough white, white on the top of the rocks, which I put in later on with white paint. So I cheated, guys. Oh well. Well, um, so that's what, one thing I did. And, and one of the students, Joyce, in class had some really nice rocks. She left the white and super super great way of going. Try to use the white of the paper first at all times. Use the white of the paper if you can. Don't use white if you don't have to. And uh, that's the great thing about watercolor and the white paper is that you try to keep it white if it's going to be there. Hey, Charlie. And um, here we go. All right. So what do we start with? Always the lights, right? And so we're going back to our value study. Remember our value study. We're going to go. This is our lights. The lights go right down the middle and kind of do a T. It's kind of like a T composition. You know, the whole four, this in front here is the only darks so that are gonna be in front. This part here, which is middle tone, which is more in the middle tone than in a dark area. So I'm gonna make it more of a light. So basically it's like a, like a cross, a crucifix um, design, where it's up and down and then across of the lights. And then the, here's the dark area around this way. And these, and this, basically the rocks in the foreground, those are really dark. Now we're not going to make them black like that, but that's just to prove a point of how you kind of make these areas that's everything this is dark shouldn't be as light as in the light area. And I mean, there can be some parts of it, but you gotta keep that in your head at all times. You cannot defer from there. You have to do that because that's, that's the design of the whole thing. And it also makes you be able to do large areas without having to do small detailed parts and it still works out great. All right, so let's go and start painting. We gotta hurry up. And um, last week I went three minutes over, four minutes over. And I don't like doing that. <laughs> so here we go. So right down the middle, we're going to not wet the paper first. I'm going to keep the sky white because it's so bright. You can put a little bit of blue in there if you want. Like let's put a little bit of blue. But it's not, um, I want it to be really, really light blue up there. Then we go right into the, um, to the mountain back there or hill or whatever that is back there. And I'm going to make some light blue. Maybe with a little green. I'm using ultramarine blue here. And I'm going to go right over everything else here. I don't care about these trees because they're going to be darker in front of that. So this is not blue enough. Let's see. Let's make it a little bit more blue. I'm using compose blue. And I'm going to just make it light. This is my lights again. I'm not drawing um, darks. I'm not putting in objects yet. Objects are put in with dark usually. And yes, these are objects. Of course we have objects, but it's not like I don't have to make it look a perfect, like a, a pine tree back there. I'm just gonna put that in there. And as it comes forward, I'm gonna put a little bit of green on the bottom part, and I can even put a little bit of tree lines there and stuff. And as it comes down, I can go even, <clears throat> even more. And look at how light that is. I'm keeping that light. And so um, bringing it down. 
putting some yellow and some, oh, I didn't want to do green. I said I wanted to do more of a fall scene, right? So let's put a little bit of um, a fall colors in there. This back here blue, being blue, it's engulfing the sky, so that's why I'm putting in blue. Is your black and white photo of your painting or of the actual photo? Is your black and white a photo of your painting or the actual photo? Just wondering which would be better to use for this value study. Um, let me think. Well, for me, because I painted it already, I could use my, I definitely could use the painting, but um, I'm gonna, I use, a, I use a photograph, usually in the first, and even the students. I bring all the students a black and white of the image so that they don't see the color and I want them to make up the color. So use the photo, make it black and white for all your photos, just make them black and white. That way um, you get the value pattern and that's almost like that's your value study. Basically, you don't have to do a value study if it is okay. Like there, a lot of times it may not be exactly right, the value, um, the values. So it's good to always do a value study anyways. I mean, if you, if you, you know, the more skilled you are, like I don't need to actually do, I do it in my head, the value study. I kind of think about where my lights and darks are gonna be. I squint at the photograph and I just look at it. I say, okay, now this is gonna be my lights and my darks. And I make it to black and white. So when you get to that point, yes, you can um, not do a value study, but if you're a student and you make it, you should definitely make your, your photo black and white. And then also, if you can do a black and white sketch of it, that's even good too. Uh, it just gives you, you know, you're physically doing the value study and you're making it, you're kind of getting it into your head by doing it, in by, by the way. So here I'm just putting in my lights, putting in my light colors. And these are lights, these are my darks. This is gonna be really, really dark over here. These are my lights that are inside the dark that will kind of shine through when I go to that point. And so down here, that's the lake. That's the, I mean the river. The river right there is light blue, right? So right away, I'm gonna just put that in there. Let's put that blue in there. That's pretty thick right there. So I'm just gonna wipe that down a little bit and go right through the rocks. The rocks don't matter because the rocks are darker. So anything that's darker, you just go right over it. Even these rocks here, I'm just gonna go down through it. And then right here is gonna be the, the blue. This is basically reflecting the sky here. So I'm reflecting the sky into the water. Oh, we got something from Arizona. Thanks, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, uh, thanks for coming from and watching from Arizona. I will be doing a Pencil Society um, demonstration come October for a Pencil Society in Dallas, but that's a Zoom. I'll be putting that out there as soon as I find out a little bit more about it. I'm not sure if you have to be, I think you may have to be part of the club there. So I'm not sure if I actually even said that. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so put down the blue here. I don't have to put anything in the rocks right now. I do want to stay away from the top of these front rocks because I do want to have some of them white. And I actually probably should have done that with some of these rocks back here because I, um, what Joyce had done in our class this afternoon was keep some of her white of the rocks. And it looked really nice because white of the paper is the whitest white you can get better than if you use white paint and you know about white paints you know some people don't really like to use white paint so that's okay so i'm putting this in here and i'm going to do the top of this um here is going to get like nice yellow right here and as you can see i'm going a little bit more warmer this time with my foreground stuff like these trees and the rocks um, i had a more green and that's more of a cool color so i kept them back a little bit but that's okay to keep these all warm and then the background and the water being cool. And then this part where the, you can see through the water, that I'm gonna make the same color kind of as that is gonna be, but it's usually what you see underneath the water is the algae and a lot of times it's again a brownish or greenish. And so I'm basically making that light color that's gonna be underneath the water. So I'm painting, basically painting all this stuff that's underneath the water, one value, one color. And then I'll, I'll identify the rocks by um, putting the dark shapes around them. And now I didn't wet the whole surface like I normally do because some of these parts I kind of want to keep away from the top of the rocks. So I'm doing that on purpose that I, I, I could put masking fluid down there, but that's a lot of masking fluid. I might as well just go around it with my brush while I'm painting, I always figure. So here I'm just putting this, um, these again, this is the color of what's underneath the water. And then I will put some lines in here of white to show the surface of the water, which glistens sometimes, and it'll glisten on top, and that's where you get the white. And there I would 
probably be better off to put masking fluid in, but too late now. Or I can rub out some of the white reflections in here. And I know I could put some of this into the rocks too, in the bottom of the rocks, but it's not that important because I can still do that later. You can always make things darker. You can't things, make things lighter. Well, we found out today you can if you rub out, but you don't want to think that way. You don't want to think that you ever want to go back into an area. Now there, I've got a little bit that creeped into the, into the thing, that into my blue sky. So I'm going to take that out of there real quickly. And so now there's my lights, right? And these rocks that are going to be dark, um, and even the light ones, I can, put, I can put that in there as I go along. All right, so let's go right into our darks. Any questions? Nope. All right, let's keep on going. Arnie, we got from Massachusetts, it looks like. Or is that Maine? That's probably Maine, right? <laughs> Maine. <laughs> got somebody from Maine and all the way from Arizona to Washington. Thanks a lot for coming. And Sheboygan. <laughs> I will be up in Green Bay in October. I'm doing a workshop in Green Bay, which I have no clue yet, um, the details on that yet. I know I'm going to be up there in a certain days, but there's no place to sign up yet. So I'll find that out. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Mm. I just read this great Smoky Mountains also. Uh, welcome. That's awesome. This should feel right at home. It's great Smoky Mountains. This guy, maybe this should be the Great Smoky Mountains. All right, so let's go from the back to the front now. And um, really quickly, I want to do the, the background because I want to get into the showing you how to do these rocks. Because today it's all about rocks and inside water, right? So I'm going in here with a really dark, dark. This is kind of a warm, dark, um, brownish, grayish green. Kind of like an olive green almost because I'm making it more like this one is going to be a little bit more not in the summer kind of look but more in the fall kind of look so I'm using my small rounder brush number eight round brush here and I'm getting this dark right away just going in there making a little pine tree this is still wet so I'm going to get some soft edges in here which is fine I'm just looking to make sure that the outer edge right here is hard edged and that's all that's important I'll put some violet into this thing too it makes it kind of brown and so um, brown is good for fall also. And green, I mean, pine trees still stay green. So olive green is a good green for that and um, more of a brownish green. Then we can put some orange in there too of a tree maybe that's right next to it. And again, this should be our darks, remember? Remember our value study is that this, this area in here is gonna be your dark. And so you cannot switch from that. You have to make that dark. I mean, there can be parts in here that are like middle tone, and it all depends on what dark you have here. As long as it's not as um, light as in the light areas, then you're fine. It's just saying it doesn't have to be black, but as long as it's darker than in your light areas. And so I'm going to go through here now, use my bigger round brush. I don't need to have that small. And now it's getting pretty hot in my studio again. <laughs> well, I gotta find a, I gotta find an air conditioner that can um, be outside and I can blow some cold air in here. <laughs> it gets very warm in my studio in the summer here. Very, very warm out there today. So let's go with a little bit more orangey yellow down through here. And again, I'm doing this because I didn't want to do it like this. This is all green summer. This is summer, right? So I'm going to do a little bit more fall. You know, you do whatever you want with the colors. Uh, in my newsletter this week, I talked about um, color preferences for people who paint outdoors and people who are urban sketchers and who are plein air painters because I find that a lot of plein air painters paint exactly what they see out there color-wise. And um, urban sketchers don't. They kind of make it up on their own and they kind of, and some do, some don't. So I was just asking in my newsletter what you do. If you are a sketcher or a um, plein air painter, what do you do? Do you use the colors exactly like they're out there? Or do you kind of uh, make them up as you go along? Or do you do a little bit of both? You know, I'd love to know. I, I haven't done enough um, urban sketching, which I haven't done any of actually. Um, I have done plein air painting. And a lot of times I, I kind of switch off, but I kind of, used, kind of use a lot of the colors that are out there, but then also make up a little bit if I need to. So if you are one, I'd love to hear from you. Love to hear how you, how you do it. It's always fun to um, talk to other artists and see how, they're, how they do things. And, and so see, I'm, I'm making this area dark and I'm using like violet, a little bit of violet here, a little bit of black. A little bit of green with the blue and the cranium gold. 
And as it goes back here, though, I'm going to keep that a little bit lighter. So let me put this right here first. Let's get this into the shadow part. And let me make these trees back here just a little bit um, lighter and more of a green, like more of a more of a blue, uh, blue like a, a gray blue. That's another thing you can use a lot of grays. Grays, we don't use enough grays. And that was our thing last week with black. You know, using black is, is fine. It's, it's great for darkening things with. So here we can go through there. Maybe a little bit of orange through here. Make it maybe some kind of tree right here in front. Bushes, shoreline. That's a shoreline, so we can make it kind of grassy, grassy shoreline, but it's burnt out a little bit, so it's fall, so we're going to make it a little bit more warm and not so green, more of a, a tan color of grass. You know, a little. I was just in Utah and saw a similar scene. Thanks for helping me paint it. Oh, cool. Utah, there's another place I've never been to. Got to get some. I got to get a. Got to get some workshops out there. I just got and sent some um, images from a friend in um, Switzerland, and oh my gosh, what beautiful scenery! That um, that I had gone to um, Switzerland at one time when I was younger. And um, I always thought it was the most beautiful area. I didn't go to this place that this um, friend is at, but um, <laughs> it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Let's see if maybe we can use some of his some of his imagery that I use. Maybe we can use that one of these Thursdays. All right, so there's my dark. Right, my dark goes through here. Now let's do this side really quickly. And again, when I say quickly, that doesn't mean you have to do it quickly. I have to do it quickly because I only have an hour to do it. But you don't have to do it, because I noticed that a lot of students try to go too quick. Um, take your time. Think about what you're doing. Uh, you don't need to be fast on this. F speed has no nothing to do with painting, <laughs> really. It doesn't have anything to do with it. The amount of speed, I manage this very quickly because I've been in advertising for so long, I've gotten used to painting very fast. Um, I used to have to do storyboards within a certain amount of time, Otherwise, you know, they wouldn't have time for the meeting to get the storyboards into the meeting. So everything was on, on a certain time limit. You don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about time. Um, time to you is whatever time it takes you to do the object right and do the washes right. Don't rush it. And so now this tree right here is a very important tree. That's my center of interest. I like to call it area of interest because this area right here is my area of interest. So let's just go right in there. And um, I'm going to use my smaller round brush again because I want to do a little bit more. I want the tree to be really, really nicely drawn. And it's kind of like a silhouette shape of a tree. And I'm using the side of my brush again to get kind of the... I kind of push down the side of my brush. I'm not sure if you can see that. Paint it forward a little bit. And watch out that you don't make it too looking like a, a Christmas tree that you put the pin A into A and B into B and, you know, that it's so perfect. No, trees outdoors, especially pine trees, they, they don't grow really nice. They, there's little batches in there where it may be um, the branch broke off or there's no branch there at all. So don't make it so perfect, the trees. I'm just needing to make it, one thing I need to do is make it dark. I need to make this really nice and dark. Because this is my, again, this is my dark area. This is what I need to keep dark. I need to push this forward, this tree in front of the, the background trees that are in a distance. And it is hot, so Austria, yet yeah, let's paint that. <laughs> been there, it's my favorite. Austria, yeah, I've been to Austria too. Um, never did a workshop there, but so I'm going to look into maybe doing a, um, I would love to do a um, workshop in Switzerland or Austria. Innsbruck, I've been to Innsbruck. At one point I was at Innsbruck and that was beautiful. But I found I found that I like Switzerland the best out of all the places that I went when it was to Germany and just being in there. And these photos also are just phenomenal. I mean, they're in the middle of the mountains and the valleys and just gorgeous. And the nice cows in the, um, on the fields and very cool. So here again, I'm putting a few light um, things in there, but overall, I have to think about the darks. That's what's most important over here is my darks. I've got to keep this dark. I can keep it warm. I can keep it with reds and you know earth tones to make it look like fall. 
Um, but I just have to make sure that I make it look nice and dark. I have to follow the value study. And this value study um, being that when I'm doing this negative painting on some of these trees, because some most of this is like, that's positive, right? But there's some of these things that go around and you see the side of it, so that's negative. And that's what you have to really keep in touch with when you're doing these rocks later on. And I'll show you how to do the rocks. Northern Italy too, that's, yeah, that's very close to it. It's borders Switzerland. So yeah, that would be great too, Northern Italy. And so we're gonna put some violet up here. This is underneath, these are gonna be, this is like a little wall here of rocks, just basically. Now these rocks back here, the ones that you really, um, there where there's about a million rocks back here, I'm just gonna give it some texture because I can't do every individual one up back there. It's just not feasible. You don't wanna, and you don't have to do it. It's, I'm gonna go around these up here by negative painting them. But the ones that are in the shadow, I'm just gonna do the whole big shadow. Still too far away to get individual rocks back there. Um, you can, after it's dry, if you wanna put a few like um, negative, excuse me, negative painted shapes of rocks, that's fine. But what I'm doing right now is going in here and getting the shape of the top of the rocks in front. So that's negative painting. So yeah, I just go through here. It's like a shadow. Make it a little bit more purple and blue, maybe a little purple and blue. And um, it's kind of grayish, that's fine. And see how I'm going on top of these rocks, over the top of these? And I'm creating the shape of these rocks that are in front of this. These are also rocks, but I can't do every individual one of them. So they're all together in the shadow. So I'm doing the edges. The edge of these rocks is what I'm doing. And then the front rocks, the, run, the rocks that are in the front here, those then become the top of the ones in front. And that's called negative painting, negative painting those rocks. Take this right into here, because this is gonna be dark. And let's make this dark. And then this is like um, the shoreline back here. And then there's gonna be reflections into the water here. And then I'm just gonna make a little bit reflect, reflected um, reflections basically down here of in blue, because this is blue water. And then the reflections would be not the color of that what's up there, but just the color of blue right now. Just make it first the color of the water, which is blue. And then later you can put a little bit of that color up above into that wash. But see how I went around these rocks? And so on the, the tops, because the tops of those rocks have to be light. Now these rocks that are in the shadow, those don't have to have the light top yet because they're all in shadow. And we can give that texture later. And so watercolor is all about getting certain watercolor techniques, textures. So how do you get textures for certain things like rocks and um, the foliage? And you know, there's so, so many different ways of getting that. And one is spattering. One would be with a, um, a sponge, like a natural sponge like this to get on the rocks. There's many ways of getting um, different textures, cellophane, paper towel, tissue paper. And I'll go on to that a little bit later, but I, it's very important to learn how to do textures in the, in the end. But more importantly is the value. So always remember that first though, the value is number one, or number two. Um, drawing is number one. Drawing, make your drawing good. So there is my shadow. So that's the top of that ridge right there. The shadow comes down and then the shadow kind of goes back here and kind of connects this tree to these because it's like it kind of is a shadow underneath the tree. Make a little bit of, um, I make it even darker because I want to make this a little bit darker and maybe it could be the more contrast I have right here shows that this is in front of all this lightness that's back there. And because this is wet, I'm not getting a hard edge there, which I'll put in later once it dries. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that I make this look different from the background with color and with um, values. This is my darkest dark against my lightest light it has to be right in this area to make that my center of interest or like I like to call it area of interest. Now, really quickly, I'm going to show you something before I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I just want to show you something about rocks and so about boulders and rocks and that it's all about negative painting and so i'm just gonna bring this out here really quickly and let's just pretend like we're drawing these big rocks in the front okay here's a shape of a rock here's a shape of a rock in front of it here's a shape over there here's another one here's another one and here's another one smaller one and there's and, and the water here we have real small ones you know here's a bunch of rocks and and one thing we did say, I did say to my students is that the more you draw in, you can draw them all in, the better. I mean, draw them all in. 
you don't have to paint it like that, but you need to draw every rock in there that you're going to be painting. Because it gives you an idea of what, and especially for beginners, you don't want to make things up. You know, it's too hard for you to make things up and try to keep it looking like a rock and a field of rocks or, a, you know, a river of rocks. So the first thing I would do is I get the lights. I would get the light part of these rocks. And so that would be the color. That would be the top. And I'm going to keep them white again. And so I'm going to do, by keeping them white, I'll do my background around them like I did in the one part. So here, this is my background. And whatever the background is, I'm not sure. You just know that it is darker than the top of the rocks, which it usually is because if you're using white for the top of these rocks that we're doing, so this is whatever the background is, right? So we're not going to worry about that. So there, right away, we captured the top of these rocks already. And they're all drawn. I know exactly which one rock is where. And then I have to do, I usually will do each of the rocks individually because the top of this rock is light. I'll bring this down. And as I go to the next rock, I'm going to go around that next rock or boulder and keep the top of them white like that. And then what kind of texture will I use in there? You have to know what kind of texture you want. And that's where I was talking about when, wh how you, what kind of texture are you gonna put in there? Will you spatter it? Will you use a, um, a brush like this where you tap it down and give it a texture? But I'm, what, right now what I'm doing is I'm getting the value as this is a lot darker and the dark, you get, as soon as it gets closer to the bottom, this next rock, it gets even darker. I'm gonna put black there just to give it, show you the point, making a point that right here where the next one starts, the next rock starts, I want it to be really dark. And as it goes up, it goes up and around, right? And so let's do this to this rock here too, or just this rock. And this is how you do the bigger rocks. Now the smaller rocks you do is like I just did, where, where I did this part, where I bring them all together, and then I can put little rocks in there later. I can actually paint the next layer with just slightly darker and paint them just what I'm doing here on the bigger rocks. And so here, and again, don't worry about the values or color. I mean, I mean the color I'm using right now. Worry about the, definitely worry about the values, but not the color. It doesn't matter what color you do this in. So there's the top phase of these rocks, the rocks in the back. Now, this is all hard edge. So do you want it all hard edge? No, there's some times where you maybe want this a little bit softer. So what I'll do is I'll just rub it out. I'll rub out parts of this rock so that parts of it is soft, parts of it is hard edged, right? And then there's still no texture here, really. There's still no texture because the top is light and the side is dark and underneath is super dark. And then these are all negative painted and it's, that's the way you do it. Unless you have rocks up here that are gonna be really dark. Let's say we have darks that are not, that are gonna be, and let's do another rock right here, a big boulder that's all just dark. You know, this, this rock here is just super dark. All right, and we're gonna make it really dark right here it's still going to be lighter on the top. Even if this rock is completely dark, it's still going to be darker right on the side, not on top. And then next next rock, okay, let's go a little bit brighter, more color. And let's go again. Here, I'm going to leave the top of the rocks light. And then, now these are going to be ending up smaller rocks right here. And I go down to these small rocks. And so this is the dark part. And again, I could have done this on the painting, but I just want to show you big wise, big big painting that that's how I'm going to do it on a smaller size. Um, the same thing. And so I'm going to soften some of these edges, but see how this, this dark will be, will serve two purposes. One, it will cut the shape of the next rock that's below it in front of it. It's always in front, right? And so that's negative painting. You paint the rock in front of it. And, and as it goes down towards that rock, it gets darker and as it goes up, it comes up and it gets light. And so then again, how do you, what kind of texture are you going to use? What kind of texture? And I'm going to go one more. This rock right here is going to be dark. And then this is going to be the water. Let's say this is the water down here. So then the water, let's make it blue just to show that this is water. And that's the water. Then there will be a really, really dark line right where the right where the rock hits the water. And we're not talking about reflections right now. We're not going to get into reflections. We're just getting into rocks, all right? Otherwise, I'm just going to blow your head off with information and you're not going to remember any of this. So don't worry about reflections, worry about the rock and how to make the rock. Light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark. It goes around. And not all these edges also have to be hard edged on the top. You could maybe soften parts of this, like I'm going to soften that edge, right? I can soften some of the top edges. They'll still be darker than the, um, the back or they will be lighter than the background, but it's nice to soften some edges too. And so soft and hard edges, it's all good. 
and now see how that looks like rocks and no texture but then after a certain point you want to get some texture in there so how do you do that all right let's spatter it boom 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 look at instant rock rock look textures right here with a, um with a um toothbrush you can do it with a toothbrush this kind of brush you can also do a lot of texture and also take paper put paper towel around where you don't want things to get to right so if you look at this close see how the texture looks like rocks um that's the texture but the rock has to be formed before you actually put texture always remember texture after you put in the form of the rock here i'm taking this um bristle brush which you can get like at a, a home depot or menards for like a dollar you know you can just and i'm, I'm all doing is i'm tapping down into it i can also spray water on there put salt salt is a great thing to use texture again texture after you get the values after you get the shape and values of the rocks so let's do that right away again so that's how you do it now here we do it in the picture sense and it's the exact same way so i'm gonna start in the background here do these first and i'm gonna go with the colors that i have above um that's kind of like let's see i just make it gray and it can be any color really it can be any color i'll make them gray kind of and so the top of these rocks leave light and then the bottom so and i've got them pretty much drawn in so i know which ones are top which ones are which ones are on top, which ones are on the bottom. And so keep the top of the rock light and then the side darker. And um, if they don't look, they see all right, they're all the same color. Well, then it's wet. And then after it's wet, you start putting other colors in there. And sp spend a little bit more time getting the shape. I mean, it is farther back there, but you can still give it a nice look. You can still make it dark and light and um, do the side dark. And where the water is, just leave that alone for now, because like I said, um, I'll do that later. I'll show you how to do reflections after that. Don't worry about that right now. It's too much to um, think about. So just do the side of the rocks and get some more colors in there. Don't just use one color. You know, with me, I never like to use just one color. It has to be a lot of floating, all kinds of different colors you can float in there. Just make sure that the top part of that rock is the light part. And the part in front of it, see how that, all of a sudden I got all these little rocks in there? Look at how many rocks I got in there. In two seconds, I got rocks in there. And just that the side is dark and, and the um, top is light. The same thing down here. Now here, the top is not dark yet, but um, I'll do that later. So these are the ones that are in the water here. And so I'm going in there. And again, not just one color. Use all kinds of different colors in there. Oh boy, I see you guys got questions. What about the color of rocks? Are there tips? Oh boy, there really isn't a tip for the color of the rocks. It can be anything, really. Um, I was telling that in my class. Rocks can be pretty much any color. They're usually gray. I mean, rocks are pretty much gray. And if they have, um, like, like uh, we call it moss on it, or not moss, but um, that's the word I think of. <laughs> um, seaweed um, or greenery and stuff on there, you can put that. But really, you make them any color that is your in your color scheme. They can be anything and usually they're gray and so gray colors with lavenders are always good look at my colors are everything there's red in there there's green in there there's um lavender not lavender um, burgundy you have burgundy color as i come forward i'm getting more color in them as in warmth and you can put like i said you can put blues in there look at that i put a little blue in there that as long as you float it think about the values now this water in here this is going to be where you see through um, I'm going to leave that alone because I, what I want to do is later on is just take the same color and not switch colors on here because it has to be like you're looking through. And so all the color at the bottom of this uh, creek, river, has to be the same color. The rocks above it can be any color. And you want to get those lights and darks to work, right? Individual rocks and do it individually. Each rock can be individually done. And I know a lot of times when you see like a million rocks on a beach, well, that's when you put them all together like this back here that's a million rocks back there you know on that and i will put a little bit of dashing through there but these are more ones that you can actually draw and so draw them all in the more you draw in the better menards <laughs> menards yeah um ace hardware uh, menards home depot you can get them all those these cheap brushes chip brushes you can get really cheaply did I miss anything here? This is quite a challenging scene for watercolor. No, it's not. Come on, Shannon. You can do this. This is no big deal. This is really no big deal. Look at how much I've gotten done already and how much time we have. Oh, we have plenty of time here. 
I better slow down. <laughs> so you guys can do it, definitely do this. This is, everybody did great in class today. You guys are gonna do a great job. And you, look at what you did last week. I mean, some of you guys did some unbelievable stuff last week. Really nice with the door and the flower, the roses. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Now, leave the white of these rocks. Leave the top of them white and any color for the rock itself. And um, make it nice and wet in the wet. You can wet the, you can wet the whole stone, but leaving some of it white. Just try to leave some of it white. It's so important to try to leave some of it white with, without you having to use white paint later. It's so nice not having to use white paint. It, it's so much richer. And, um, and it was proven by Joyce, who was in class today, did a great job with the top of her rocks. Really super, super awesome. And so here I'm gonna go in there, keep it white, and then just fill this in. This is gonna be really, really dark. The next rock goes down here. There's a bunch of rocks I didn't even draw in down here, which is the bad thing. Draw in your rocks. Don't think that you can do it without drawing them in. Just draw them in. It's so much easier. It's so much easier to draw them in. Because drawing is important. It's got to look like a rock, right? I mean, it's it's even a rock can have a edges and that look really better than other edges. And So draw them in nicely. Draw them in really nice. Get them proportioned nice. Leave parts of it white. And there's little crevices sometimes in them. See, I'm just putting in really dark and I'm leaving the white tops of them. I can always, I can always darken the top of it a little bit later. I just worried that I want to make sure that I get them really nice shaped and I keep white of the paper, which I didn't do on the other one and I had to use white paint. So I'm really worried about trying to keep that a lot, keep that to where it's really nice. And you can always start with a really dark color and then uh, apply nice colors into that dark. You know, and lighter colors on top of dark colors. It's fine. Absolutely fine. And here, just again, um, I think I'm getting rid of too much of the dark or too much of the white. So let's get through here and get some of this. Just do the, just do the um, shading of the rock. Leave the white part and go to the bottom of the next rock or the top of the next rock by doing a hard edge around it. And then let this just bleed into the top. And do rock by rock, rock by rock. Don't worry about inside the water yet. That's going to be very simple. This is as long as you keep it nice and um, together. Here's a little rock. Use some of this earth tone colors here. Leaving this and then this rock is a little, this is the top of the next rock. And you can always wet and let things bleed in here and there and then put in a really bright color for a light light. And in this corner here, it looks like we have a really bright rock here. But we're going to, I don't want to make a triangle in the corner, so I want to, I'm just going to make it dark. I don't want to make a triangle and make it in the corner. Even though there is one in the picture, there's a little triangle rock there. So don't do that. Don't ever put triangles in your corners. Moss on the rocks is just a color. You don't depict it as, um, it's just, it's a color of the rock. So if you need to make something um, like, like there's moss on it or grass on the top of the rock or anything, it's just a color. So just put the green color that moss is and just put it on top of the rock. That's all you need to do. Nothing, nothing special on how to do that. And nothing special with rocks either. As long as you uh, make the top light and the side dark and make some of it soft edge, some of it hard edge, it's all gonna look good. I, I guarantee it. It's just the hard part, and what the hard part will be for you, and I'll, I'll just let you know right now, the hard part is the negative painting. The idea that you keep the top part light and white and, and draw that in with the, what's above it and not actually drawing the actual rock. It's what's above it that shows the rock that's in front. Like this one right here, I just drew this one on the bottom by drawing what's above it. And here's another one. And it's not just line, I've got to make it look very um, fluid and so soft edged. And so I'll take and put some nice colors in there and again, form the top of the rock. This is the next rock underneath there. And here we have another rock and see, I'm even using orange. It's fine. It's all about the color of light and dark. And on this painting, the tops of the rocks are white. There's a lot of paintings I've done where the rocks are not white. They're just a lighter color. And so then you can make the whole rock a color like I did this one. 
like if I do this, see I made that one? So let's say I made a, 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 a colored rack. Let's say we have a really beautiful color rack over here and it's really orange and it's really bright orange on the, on the surface, right? Or if you're in Sedona, a nice red rack, right? And so we'll put in a nice red. And so there's a big boulder, right? But then you still have to make this part down here dark. And so for down there, you would just go really dark and um, then get some texture. But see, this is then darker, but it's not white. So that still works. It still works by doing it that way too. You know, you don't think that every time you do a rock, it has to be a white edge. That's not, that's not the way it is. It's just that this is lighter. And this is one way of doing it if, it, if you're using white of the paper, but you don't have to use the white of the paper either. You can also just use white or bright colors too. Like let's say this is another one. So see, you can just, as long as the top part is light and the side is dark, and it's going to switch off every once in a while too, where there may be a, a rock in here that doesn't have white on top of it. Like let's put one right here. Let's make one that's just a really bright orangey rock. And I'm just going to make that, but then it'll carve out this rock. It's in front and the side, this big rock on here too. And I started to notice that I don't have much color in a lot of these rocks. It's just very blah. And so let's push some color in there. Let's, let's get some bright colors in there. You don't have to make everything blah. You can also make it vibrant. The darks can be vibrant and it'll, it'll come forward. Now watch it though. I mean, you don't want to make sure you got colors that you've been using throughout the painting. Otherwise it looks too much like it's a separate color that you haven't used yet. You don't want to do that because then it starts looking odd and you have to use that somewhere color else. Otherwise you see that color and that's it. You just look at that and nothing else. And so I'm here. And also you can put small little rocks in there too. Like I'll do those small little Little, little rocks inside the rocks and I'll let this dry and I can see where I can put even darker yet. And this one here will be some water. This is actually another rock. It can get confusing and can get take you a while, but again, don't worry about time. Get it right the first time and it won't take you that long and it'll be a nice looking, it'll be a nice looking piece and it'll be It'll look like a rock and I'm still going to probably spatter this to make it even look more like rocks that have texture because I didn't use any texture yet. I don't have texture in there. So now I'm going to go inside the water, inside the looking into the water because this is going to be, have to dry and I'll get some texture. Actually, I'm not going to wait for it to dry because I need to get some, I'm going to spatter some water into this. I'm going to take my paper towel, put it in areas where I don't want it to be spattered. I'll take my big brush or I'll take this brush because this is actually, I'll take my um, bristle brush, the um, bristle brush. I'll just put maybe maybe some orangey color like this in there. And I'll just take my finger and I will like go like this. See how it gets on the paper towel. And so I'm just gonna go right in there and just spatter it, spatter the heck out of it. Now this is almost too fine. It's too fine a spatter. So I'm gonna use my big brush and get a little bit more thicker spatter. And I'll give it, give, give my rocks definitely good texture. Now it covered up a lot of my white. <laughs> it's like, ah, I don't want that. So I'm going to go back in there and get some of the white back. It's texture on the rocks. Get that one right there. Now you don't want it in the water because it would look like insects or something in the water. <laughs> so we don't want that. We just want to kind of keep it into our... And again, you could use salt for that. And um, at a certain point, you could use salt for that. Now what I'm going to do in here now is go get the dark part of this where you see in the water, leaving a few of these lines lighter. And so it'll look like there's, there's a light going across it and then going around some of the rocks. This is all in the water now. This all should be the same color. There shouldn't be a switch of color on this because it should look like you're looking into the water and unless there's somebody put some dye down there or something in there, like a, um, a color into the rocks, this should be all the same colors. And this guy kind of like a nice wash, but I can't use that right now. I'm just gonna give me a nice, nice watermark, but I can't use that unfortunately. And then over here, I'm gonna put a little bit of reflection into the, from the rock into the water. And again, see these are these are the rocks inside. I'm just shaping around the rocks inside. I'll, I'll do one more value after I get this value in there. 
here. I'm just going to keep that light because there's a lot of light glistening through here, which I will have to put on with paint because I went over it. So there's times when I do that, and so I have to use white paint for that. Nothing I can do about that. These rocks here will have reflections, but they will be blue, like in the color of the water or the sky. It's reflecting the color of the sky or the water. So I'm going to put them right into the water, where the reflections. And these are reflections, not shadows. They're reflections of the rock above it. And they hit into the water. And also, like a wave. A wave has three sides, the top, the back, and the front. And so each one has a little bit different value. And so I'm just using light blue to get the one side in there and just making underneath the rocks, making it darker. And as it comes forward down here, this is also water down here and I spattered it. And so I'm kind of getting rid of that spatter a little bit. It's kind of messed up my white though. Uh, it's still there, but it's not as crisp and clean as it was before. So let me get a little bit of blue to go around this, these rocks. This will give me the shape of the rock, right? And the front. So a lot of times to get the shape of something, try to go around it instead of actually making that part darker. So by making this bluer, making it a little bit darker, it shows me the shape of this rock. And I also can blend some of that blue into the rock itself too. I take a little bit of that blue, put it right into the rock here and there. Cause it will reflect, it will reflect into the rock. There's like a little shadow in parts of the rock. And let's do some of these rocks back here after I post you one more time. Right for this and Barney Rubble Paradise. <laughs> yes, this is a lot of rocks and boulders. How do I choose my color scheme? That is, a, um, that's pretty much, it's very simple. I look at the overall colors and I pick the value or the color as a, um, like if I'm using a lot of blue, I will use orange is what I'm doing here. So if I'm using red, a lot of red, I'll use a lot of green. And that's not to say that you have to use a green that's really bright green. It's just that those two are complementary colors. And so if I'm using a lot of violet, I use a lot of yellow. If I use a lot of blue. And so you can pick it out. Some people have done the try um, color thing where they take three colors and they put them together in the beginning and try to see if those are, so everything in that thing is going to be those three colors. But um, I try to just go with that very simple. I try to go with um, color scheme of colors that are complementary. So there's a lot of blue in this, so I'm going to definitely put a lot of orange into it. That doesn't mean I'm not going to put reds and other things in that, but overall it's going to be red and um, orange and blue. Now these rocks back here, and because I want this area to be a little bit more my center of interest, these rocks are just in the front, and I may even put a person back here fishing just to get this area looking really important. So now back here, I'm going to put in all those little rocks. And now I'm doing it like I'm like I just did big ones, but very, very small. So I'm going to do them very, very small and um, just kind of go in here and just make, especially this area here, make the tops of them light. And, and basically it's almost like a nervous twitch when I go in here. I'm just going to kind of um, give it parts of it the top, which you know are going to be light and some of them are going to be the bottom, which is the dark. So it's like basically doing what I did here, but in a very small little area. And also I don't want to just make it one color. And so once it's wet, I'm going to pop another colors into this area. And underneath this little ridge right here, you just do that. And I also want my darkest dark and lightest light right in this area. So I'm going to make this shadowed from the tree back here. Um, so that you look at this spot first. I want you to see this spot first before anything else. I want you to see these shadows in here so that you look right there. And then this other stuff is just stuff. On the bottom where the rock hits the water will also be a really dark dark. Because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing my detailed darks. Because I've got all my lights, got all my mediums and medium darks, and my darks that are big. Now the final thing is to put your um, small darks in there. Your detailed darks. And that's creating shapes and all kinds of objects. And those have to be super, super dark. Super dark crevices and little rocks and little shadows and where the water meets the rocks there's gonna be like a line there it's usually really dark this is a shadow from the, the tree back here and there can be little things going up into the trees here 
And just by a little bit of dark like that, it just suddenly puts it into another perspective. Like it gives you another dimension to the painting. Any questions I missed? How do you choose your color? Okay, I got the color scheme. Why do I not want triangles in the corner? It's just a bad, because your eye will go to it. Um, never put shapes, like big rectangular geometric shapes in a corner. It just makes it flattens the painting. And so that's why I wouldn't do that. If I, sometimes I may, I may not answer a question. So if you want to say it again, cause I keep on, it scrolls up. And so I won't see the stuff on top, but if you, if I didn't answer something, or if I, if you ask a question, I didn't answer, you can put it in there again. I don't, don't be, don't be scared that I'm going to say, Oh, you don't have to ask that question. No, I just probably missed it. So if you do want another question, really answer it. And I didn't get to it, please ask it again. I can't look up at it all the time. I've only got five minutes left, and so let me get this in here real quickly. And so again, for here, I'm going to take a little bit darker of this orange real quickly. I'm going to go back in here, get these darks, another dark inside underneath the water. Basically, it's the same color, just a little bit darker to create the, the shape of the rocks that are in the water. So basically, the rocks in the water are the same as the one on the outside, but they're, um, it's all the same values, same color because it's in, in the water and you can't change it. And it makes it look better if you let things all be the same value and colors, not same value, but the same color scheme. Don't be switching the color scheme inside here. Yeah, let's see real quickly, going through here. See, I'm just getting the rocks underneath here and it's like inside, it's a little bit different. There's some parts that are a little bit darker and you're creating certain little rocks and it looks like it's inside. And then the closer they are here, the more I've got to um, spend a little bit more time on there. And um, look at the photograph too, and just try to copy the photograph and what you see in the, in the rocks. Hopefully you do in the rocks so that the rocks look like they're what they are. You know, that's why you draw really nicely so that it looks like exactly what it is that you're, that you're drawing. Drawing has to be right on so that it looks like, and you know, a rock is a rock. So it's not like that important. That it looks exactly like a certain shape. And then where the water hits the um, where the water hits the bottom of the rocks, usually it's really dark there because moss grows there, and it's just it's always wet. It reflects the lighting, so it's always a really nice dark there. And you have little crevices in the rocks themselves, cracks and stuff, and you do that kind of thing. And now I'm gonna put a little fisherman back here, only because I want I just want this guy right back. Ooh, I just put that in there. That's gonna be a bird. So here, I'm just going to put a guy right there. He's got, maybe he's got waders on. He didn't get into the water yet, but um, I'm going to give him a little head here. He's got his fishing cap on. With all his lures on it. A little bit big. He's got that little satchel on it. He's a fly fisherman, so now we'll get his little rod there. And if this is too thin a thing and you want to do it with a pencil, go right ahead. Here's a little fisherman back there. He's just fishing. He's got his dog right next to him. There you go, a little tail. Maybe there's two dogs. We don't know. <laughs> and so a little bit darker. Again, some more rocks. And we're getting to the end here. And I could put something more over here, but I kind of like the fact that it's away and I don't want to give your attention to certain spots. So if you don't want to give attention to certain areas, then stay away from them and keep it, lose your edges there, the, the out of focus. A lot of photographers do that, keep things out of focus. All right, guys, so I think other than maybe a little bit of white, and we got one more minute, I would take a little bit of white and on the top, remember I said I forgot the sparkle, I didn't get the sparkle. Well, if you just take pure white and then where the sometimes there's be sparkle in the water where the sun hits the sun hits the water and so i'm just going to put pure white there and it's usually just dots 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 a lot of dots and then usually right where the sun hits the water where it's going to get dark right here and then there's also little waves that you see on top of the on top of the water there's wave white waves because you see it, basically what you're seeing is the sky right you're seeing what's above what's above it because 
then it becomes the sky again because it's like a mirror. So it reflects what's above. And so I'm just putting pure white right here. And I'm hurrying so I can get it done in the time. All right, so there you go. There you have it. Um, stunning painting, David. Love the addition of the fisherman and dog. <laughs> Thanks, Nick Pratt um, Lovely. Okay, let me take the tape off and we're done. 7.30, right on time. And so if you have any more questions about rocks, um, go again to this. I think I covered everything about rocks that could possibly be covered about rocks. Um, again, texture, how you get your texture. A lot of people get texture different ways. If there's a way I didn't mention that you get texture, please let us know. I would love to see here how you get your texture. Um, there's a lot of fun ways to get texture. Um, again, um, salt, spatter, all kinds of things. So uh, thanks again also for the suggestion to do rocks because I got a lot of emails asking me to learn, teach you how to paint rocks. And so this is, this is one of them. And also inside the water. And so I got two of them down in one and one um, <laughs> wash. And so here's, this, this is the, what we did for the, remember that. So I just put that there real quickly. And so this is the afternoon one and this is the evening one. So you can tell um, green, not green. <laughs> All right. So until next week, guys, um, ask some questions. And again, if you want to, um, um, if there's something you want me to teach you how to draw, paint, uh, let me know. I'd love to know. And we will try to get it in there. Sometimes um, you guys send me pictures, but it's a little bit hard and some of the pictures are pretty tough. And so I have to make it um, paintable. And so I may use it, or I may not, and um, just give it a try. You never know. All right. So until next week, guys, till next Thursday, we'll see you then. All right.